¿cómo están? Yo soy Sofía Macías y les quiero dar la bienvenida a un video muy pero muy especial de Pequeño Cerdo Capitalista. Tuvimos la maravillosa oportunidad de entrevistar a Michael Porter, un grandísimo especialista en temas de competitividad de Harvard y es el autor del afamado modelo de las cinco fuerzas, este modelo que nos ayuda a analizar la competencia en cualquier industria. Michael Porter estuvo en el foro de Wobby México 2018 y después de su conferencia le preguntamos sobre cómo la tecnología ha cambiado este modelo de las cinco fuerzas de la competitividad, cómo se puede crear valor compartido y cómo los emprendedores podrían replantear el diseño y creación de sus productos con la transformación digital. Muy importante para que no se vayan a perder nada de esta valiosa información y por eso se los estoy diciendo muy lentamente, este video está en inglés, pero está subtitulado al español y para activar los subtítulos, no son automáticos, necesitan ir al cuadrito que está acá abajo, darle clic o si no, en configuración también hay una opción de subtítulos en español. Configuración es el engrane chiquito que está también aquí. Si ya activaron los subtítulos y ya están súper listos, los dejo con Michael Porter. Well, it you know it has uh, it it has differing impacts in different industries. So, um, in some industries, it um, it keeps creates a commodity. You know, everybody can do it. Uh, and uh, uh, whereas in in the world where you didn't have the internet and you had to do it yourself and you had to have employees and all that to sell your product, now you can do so much online. So it, at some level, it reduces certain kinds of differentiation uh, and nullifies them. And in other industries, it, uh, it creates a tremendous competitive advantage. In retailing, for example, the idea that you can take advantage of e-commerce. And, and, and now what we're learning is probably where we're going to go is, is that the commerce, physical and the digital, are going to be together and be connected. Um, And that's just transformative. And, and companies that don't uh, take advantage of that are going to be out of business. So again, uh, it, what we see is that, that, that when we look at the five forces, there's all kinds of changes going on in the environment. And, that, and, and they can affect barriers to entry. They can make it go up. They can make it go down. Uh, they can affect the relationship with the customer. They can make it harder or easier. You know? So for example, the internet's giving the customer lots of information. So they know more about the price, so therefore they're more price sensitive. Uh, but it can also give other customers, if you're focusing on those customers, it can give those customers much more information and insight. And, so th and they might be able to be more sophisticated and understand how to create more value with the technology. So they might be willing to pay a premium for a product if they have better information that they get through the internet. So again, uh, I think people are always looking for Are the five forces changing? And the answer is they're changing all the time, but not in one way. They change different ways depending on the industry. And uh, you, you can't really generalize uh, too much. Well, this is a, a tremendous passion of mine and something we've been working on for a long time because uh, basically, uh, as we, if we look at the world, we know we have lots of social problems. And we know that governments and even nonprofits are often not capable of solving those problems. They don't have the money, they don't have the people, they don't have the expertise to do that. And, um, and what we know is that business is very, very efficient and very, very effective at meeting needs. Uh, but what we've historically had business has been looking very narrowly at needs. And they've been thinking mostly of economic, kind of traditional economic needs. But the concept of shared value says there's often a, uh, a synergy uh, between social and economic from a business point of view. If a company can build a product that's environmentally tremendously uh, safe and clean and all that, that's a way of gaining a competitive advantage and, 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 and earning a profit. And uh, so shared value is, is op tries to open up the idea that you can, you, can, you can integrate social improvement into your core business. You don't have to give, give money away and be a philanthropist, you know. You don't have to just have a CSR program. You can actually view, uh, you know, dealing with an important social issue as a business opportunity. 
And, uh, and, and that's what capitalism has done all through history. I mean, in the old days, everybody built their own house, you know, and then eventually, you know, we had capitalism came and business came and business learned how to make houses cheaper and better. And so they expanded the opportunity for people to have a house. And, and, and that was meeting a really important need to have a good shelter, a good quality shelter. But, uh, but that idea can be extended to in the environment, to uh, virtually every social problem, water, um, uh, you know, all the things that we worry about, uh, even, even helping disadvantaged communities uh, rise. Uh, and we see all kinds of innovation now going on, and the younger generation is, is, is starting to grasp this power of business to actually deal with these problems. Whereas in the old days, they would work for an NGO. But now I think we realize that if, if we can have a business model for improving housing, then we can scale it because it's, it's profitable, therefore we can keep doing it and we, and we can self-finance it. Whereas the, the philanthropic model or the NGO model depends on donations. And uh, so that's the basically the shared value idea. I think it's being, I think it's, it's we're, we're very, very pleased to see the tremendous uptake of this issue around the world. I'm very encouraged by that. I think, I think businesses are ready to move beyond just you know, being responsible and do more. Uh, and I think um, uh, all around the world, there's more and more companies that are, are doing this. As you may know, uh, we were able to work with Fortune Magazine to have a list of the 50 companies in the world that were essentially changing the world through shared value. Um, and uh, we now have groups, uh, business groups, all over the world that are kind of focused on shared value, and we have shared value prizes. So it's very exciting to see and, and, and very hopeful. Uh, I, think, I think if we could approach social issues this way and if business was engaged, then I think we could make a lot more progress faster. So that's the basic idea. Well, you know, I think we have a lot more uh, opportunities to, you know, products are changing and the opportunities for products and how they work and what the technology is and how they reach customers is evolving very rapidly. Uh, for example, today's talk about augmented reality uh, is going to be a basis for really changing products. So, um, and giving them enormously more capacity to meet your needs. Uh, and, and products will educate you. Um, and um, so uh, I think, I think uh, the products are broadening and there's more, you know, more interesting innovation every day. I see somebody, oh my gosh, that's a great idea. And, and it, was from th it was thinking about products in a non-traditional way and thinking about how uh, technology today allowed products to look differently. And, and of course the biggest single change was the ability to make products smart and connected. And uh, that is a huge, uh, a huge change. But, uh, but it even goes beyond that. Thank you. Good questions.